Howdy folks, welcome to Run 8. Over here in Barristyle Yard, we're going to be pulling out some locals here that are sorted, seeing what needs to head out, and then we'll see what kind of time we have, might be running some locals. Looks like we've got a train coming through. It's, uh, it's a foggy winter here in Barstow. What time is it? 11.17, just coming up on noon. actually synced up uh, with real time. Sounds like we got a, a train out there somewhere on the main. Looks like we got a reefer running too. Yep. Old beat up UP reefer. All right, let's go get some power. Get the uh, car tags on. So we've got uh, 1161 and 0611 here. You get them split up. Uh, we've got some lot 53. Like we also got YR, YR in here. So I got a little bit of shuffling to do. Um, we've already got some 0611 there. Looks like I've got power on it. Probably ought to get a few more cars on there. Ought to have a buffer as well. There's the train coming through on the main. Auto rack headed somewhere. I put a buffer on there. What are you? You are... Oh, you're headed somewhere. Well, let's fix that real quick. I'm just going to use the train maker upper on this guy. empty and we'll just call it a buffer there we go is that all 0611 here I forget what I was doing it's been a while well that's all 0611 So that's probably pretty much ready to head out once I get it uh, tied together. Don't have much of a yard lead over here. So I'll grab my yard power. Grab this cut. Stick it on the end of that and probably get that headed out of here. Uh, let me just double check. So, 0611. Well, it actually runs out of bar style. Yeah, okay. That works. Well, at any rate, let's get let's get that uh, train built. So we're going to be in this pair. Uh, we're going to set. Yeah, we'll use this pair here. Sorry. Trying to think in my head and, and do too many things at once. Thank you. 
All right, let's get our lead loco set up. You're in run. All right, that's all set. trailing unit. I think we just need generator field on this guy. Port hit trail. are connected. Keyboard is not cooperating here. There we go. I think I have to set the uh, MUs on there. What am I missing here? Probably missed something in the cab. I'm trying to learn my way around, not have to use the um, auto button. I'm not sure if there's something in the cab I've missed. Yeah, definitely just the lead units responding. So I didn't do something right. Let's double check that that is closed. Hmm. So I can hit that button. Not sure what I'm missing though. Well, let's hit that button and see what changes. Auto MUDP. Boink. All right, anything change in here that I can see? Not really. Is that Bob? Bob's just over there silently judging me as usual. I don't think anything here matters, as far as I know. I don't think it's modeled. Turn the panel lights on, it looks like. <laughs> Other than that, I don't know... I don't know that anything changed. Both responding now, though. So there's something, something changed somewhere. I'm not sure what it was, though. I'll have to look into that. That was lit up already. So yeah, I don't know. No clue. So we need to get over to that other track so we need to go down cross over and then across and cross over there
Oh, driver's being finicky. I can't tell what notch I'm in. What's up, Captain Weirdo? Happy Sunday to you. So we come back through here and cross over. Like calibration is not the best again on the running. I got to go about halfway down the throttle to get to notch one. It's not good. I'll make it work though. This makes the controls sloppy. All right, you're lined up. You're lined up. That should take us all the way across. Hopefully cloudy today. A little bit of snow on the ground. All these th switches thrown back. Keep everything neat and tidy. Okay, now we need to get back to... It was track number two, wasn't it? Let's take a quick look. Uh, no, track number is the third one over. Um, which should be this one? Hey, what's up, Ace and Big Chris? Uh, I'm really liking V3. I think it's a good update. A lot of cool little things added. And some big stuff as well. Like the AI dispatcher and AI humping. Which is really nice for us single player folks. Alright, so we're lined in there, so that's good. Let's ride the step over. What's up, Fegan? What game is this, Ace? Uh, it's called Run 8 Train Simulator. So it's uh, it's a complete like railroad simulator. Super good physics and systems and just everything railroady. Tons of detail. Right now we're uh, we're building a local that's just about ready to go out. I just need to put the two halves of the train together. So we're using yard power to do that. It's 
Uh, there's no mods. It's uh, it's just a world, and it's pretty pretty accurate, and it's to scale. So we're in the Barstow yard right now. It's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty close. And it comes with, I'm not sure if it's like 150 miles, 200 miles, something like that of, of main line with industries and various things on it. So it's not like your typical uh, train games. Train handling is getting a little rusty. There we go. Boop. No, it's not the whole world. It's just uh, specific routes. Uh, if you go to run8studios.com, you can read all about it. So the base game that you buy for 50 bucks comes with, I think, three routes. Let me just show you real quick for those of you that are new. Uh, let me go over to the Depot server. The Depot is a community based around Run8. Here we are, and they have a tracker for their Depot Plus server. So let me just pop this up. Uh, this is tracker.thedepotserver.com. You can get to this from their main website, thedepotserver.com. Uh, these are the three main areas that you can buy routes for. So there's out here in California, there's up in New York, and it's down in like Florida, Georgia area. Uh, we're over in, and I always lose track of where we're at. We're in, that's, we're in Barstow. So we're here in California. Is that in Cal yeah, that's in California, over on the edge of California. Um, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember exactly what's included, but part of this is included with the base game. You have to buy other routes. You can go all the way out to uh, Arizona, all the way up to Fresno, down to L.A. But the, the base game is just kind of like right around this area. I hope that helps. Uh, Run8studios.com. You can read all about it. Why play this game? Because uh, this is a simulator, and I, I love simulators. So, you're going to see why I like this. So, we've just coupled up to this cut of cars. Uh, this cut of cars has no air in it. So, we're going to have to hook everything up. Pump the air up. All that good stuff. Come on. Give me the coupler. There we go. All right. Get that air hose connected. So if I click on one of these cars, you know, it's it's modeled super detailed. We've got the brake pipe pressure, the auxiliary, auxiliary reservoir, emergency reservoir, the brake cylinder. Uh, it's got really good physics. It's just awesome. It's the only simulator like it. Uh, those ankle cocks are open. The well, Train Sim World is just a, a like a baby game compared to this. I mean, it doesn't simulate really anything. This is for people that want to run a railroad. Nothing wrong with either way. They're just different. If you just want pretty graphics and a simple train game, Train Sim World fits that bill perfectly. I could also just push a button and set all this up but one of the things I like about this is running around and doing all the little things you need to do if 
be more realistic missing graffiti yeah I, th I think i read somewhere that they didn't want to glorify vandalism so they they chose not to have graffiti but i don't remember if i'm if i've got that right and it's raining what's the temperature like Do, 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 do. 35, so it's just about freezing, so we're not going to get any snow. A lot of people can't get past the graphics, and that's fine. It does have simplistic graphics, uh, but it's got weather. Uh, when it snows, snow actually accumulates on the ground. I mean, so there's, there's a lot going on. It's just simpler graphics than some people like. And not everybody wants to do this. Not everybody wants to run around and connect air hoses and have to worry about the brakes working properly and having everything modeled and detailed failure modes and AI trains running over hundreds of miles of actual real scale railroad. Uh, but if you like that, that's what Run8 offers. It also has super solid multiplayer. There's a lot of communities that have servers and they run their railroad like the real thing to varying degrees. All right, we're almost done. And like I said, if you don't want to do this, uh, you can set it up to where you just hit a button and it hooks all this up and charges the train with air and you don't have to worry about it. All right, so on this end, we want to cl close the Senko cock. I'm going to close that. So that's closed off now. Otherwise, the air would just vent in the atmosphere, and that wouldn't be good. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use the key here. Wink! Go all the way back to the end of my train. Now we need to get air into this train so we can release the brakes and move it and have control of it. Uh, but we can't just release all the air in immediately, or that would trip the emergency and put the whole train in emergency, and then we'd have to reset everything. So we're going to partially open the angle cock, and you'll see this thing move right here, partially open. So we're going to watch our flow meter now. This is uh, cubic feet per minute. We've got to wait till that gets down to 60 or below before we can open that up the rest of the way. Uh, now these particular engines, the GP40-2s, they have a mechanical air pump. Uh, so we're uh, reversers in neutral. I'm going to bring these up to notch three so they will pump air as efficiently as possible. Now we're pumping air in the train and we can, uh, once we apply brakes, we can watch it go throughout the whole train. It simulates the air movement through the train. See our uh, brake pipe pressure on this first car is coming up to 36. Auxiliary reservoir is starting to fill, as well as the emergency reservoir. Uh, hand brakes are applied on the whole train, I believe. So what we're going to do is we're going to pump up air on this cut so we can move it. We're going to pull it back, we're going to shove it up, hook up to this train, and then this train is ready to head out. It's already got power on it. So while we're pumping that, let's take a look. Uh, I think we have to head out to the Mojave sub. So what you get with the base game, this is the bar style like yard area. And you get the Mojave sub, which is, I don't even know how many miles and miles and miles of track. Uh, this local we're building, it's gonna come in here from the bar style Yermo sub needs to come over here to the boron area, and that's where its industries are. So this is just a dispatch screen. It doesn't show all the uncontrolled dark territory. Uh, all these little numbers here, these are trains that are running on the railroad. Let me turn that on, the symbol. Okay, and I've got the AI dispatcher working the main line, so it's getting all these trains to their destinations. Their destinations are determined by tags. 
So that ends in BAR, so it's headed for Barstow. It's like it's coming out of Rice, heading to Barstow. Got some stuff over at Needles. Here we've got another one headed over to Barstow. Hopefully we'll get some more stuff to Barstow because we don't have anything in the receiving yard. We need some more cars. All right, we're still pumping air. Come all the way down to this end of the train. Yeah, we got 48 pounds down here on the brake pipe, so it's getting there. It's pumping it up. So this track right here, uh, the tracks aren't labeled. I don't remember which track that is, but this track has the, um, is this 0611? I've got a spreadsheet here that I'm tracking the locals that I actually work. Yeah, the uh, El Cal 0611, the Boron local. That's what we're building right now, and it's going to be ready to head out, so. Um, I'm not sure. I need to, I'm still learning the new V3 systems. I don't know if I can have the AI take it over to Boron, or if I'd have to do that myself. I know if I'm driving the train, I could tell dispatch that I want to go to the siding. But I, I don't think you can do that and have an AI take it there. So, well, we might end up running this local. I'm not sure. Depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Another cool thing Run8 has is a working hump yard. And now in ver version 3, you can actually have the AI hump train. So, train gets pushed up this little slope here. And then it's going to automatically scan to see where the cars need to go. So, the hump controller is set up. You have different configurations. So, I ran trains through here and it sorted it out per local. And that's why these cars turn on the car tags. These cars are now sorted into these different bowl tracks based on what local they're going out on. So that's another cool thing. And it all just works with physics. It's got really good physics. Uh, it rolls down the slope. These retarders reduce the speed if needed and it automatically sets the switches. Maintains the car speed with these uh, retarders on the track. Hump yard, that's right. We do lots of humping. <laughs> Insert joke here. Alright, our flow is getting down there. We're just about ready to open this valve all the way and get some air in this train. Down to 60. Let's go for it and hopefully don't trip anything. It's a lot of air. Some nice rain effects. Yeah, our flow meter is pegged now. But the valve's all the way open, so we're uh, rolling the air throughout the train. Uh, I'm going to go and set my independent. And I'm going to release all the handbrakes. You hear the slack. The engines aren't moving, so that's good. It's fairly flat here. It's got a little bit of a grade, but not too bad. All right, how are we looking? Lots of pressure. Excellent. Should have a... Yeah, we've got a release on the whole train. Once the flow's down to 60, that's considered a full release, so... We're going to be pulling forward here in just a bit. Uh, let's see, what's... Uh, only six of the cars are loaded, so it's only 1,400 tons. It's not too bad. 
1,600 feet long. Might even be able to handle that with just loco brakes. All right, our flow is down. I'm gonna consider that good. Where's the train gonna wanna go? Okay, I thought it coasted down. So that's just gravity. We're gonna help gravity a little bit. Oh, easy there, rail driver. So rail driver is a train controller. It's got levers and knobs and buttons. I think my throttle's a little bit out of calibration. Right, I'm gonna put five pounds on the loco brakes. Probably could have used dynamics too. Yeah, let's go ahead and get some dynamic on here. Help us slow down. I should have checked. <laughs> I just assumed I still had all the switches lined up correctly. Yeah, we got all kinds of switch lead. All right, good. We're good. Hear the dynamic brakes growling. Easy train. Easier to stop the loco brakes. All right, now I need to get these switches aligned, but they're uh, dispatcher controlled. So I need to temporarily override dispatcher control and just throw that one and throw that one. There we go. Now we're lined up to push into that terrain. this car and we're gonna see if we can get moving here before we do that let me run the calibrate For as much as this thing costs, it is a piece of junk sometimes. 
Anywho, let's get moving. Sometimes it's easier just to use the keyboard. Everything except the throttle lever on the rail driver is working pretty good. The throttle lever is just a piece of junk. Keep it around five mile an hour until we get close. back. There we go. And breaks off. I'm gonna let everything settle, slack settle down. Was this train? I thought I'd set. The, uh, I thought I'd set that one up already. Well, shoot! I swore I set all the air hoses on this the other day. Maybe I didn't. Oh, I wonder when I replace it with the train maker upper. I wonder if that unhooks the air hoses. mouse skips around a little bit. I think it's because the engine they use is so old. Sometimes it just can't deal with modern stuff that well. Should have saved my position back there at that other hopper. Alright, how are you guys set up? Are you hooked up at all? Nope. Alright, connect you, connect the MU hoses. flow there. Let's double check that that's closed. Can't 
Can't see anything. <laughs> Flashlight's not very good. Alright, let's get these guys started. Their sounds need some adjustment. They're not very consistent. Some of the engines are really quiet. These Jeeps aren't too bad. All right, I'm gonna reset up the train. I'm gonna actually set... No, I need to cut off the other power before I do that. So never mind. Yeah, you guys aren't responding. That's fine. Yeah, let's go cut off the power. Uh, do, 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 use this button. So let's get these guys off the back of the train. Uh, we need to close you. Close you. And we can open the coupler pin. Let's have you set there. Let me shoot us for a bit. Take back this train. Put the uh, put an EOT on the back of here. Open that up. So that sound is a little air power turbine that charges the battery in the uh, end of train device here. All right. Pop up to the front of the train. Get this guy all set up. Auto, everything. There we go. And we start pumping air in the half of the train that doesn't have any air. So you can be open. You can be partially open. Some of the, all these angle cars. Oh, they're all closed. Kidding me? I didn't notice that when I was walking through two of those. Oh, man. Alright, I think opening one car at a time will be pretty much okay, but we'll keep an eye on the flow rate. You used to be able to hear it too in, in version two, anyway. I don't hear any air. It was pretty subtle. I might not be able to hear it over the rain. Yeah, we're gonna be okay. I think open these up one at a time. Eventually we'll get down to where the trains join together.
there's a brown hopper down that way, I'm pretty sure. Quite a bit of flow. I think maybe that's my... No, it's that one, I think. Yeah, that one, because that's got brake pressure. Brake pipe pressure. All right, you're open. Should start evening out, I think. Yeah, because from here back, it's all all open. Uh, we'll probably have to do a set and release, get everything synced back up, make sure it's working. All right, let's head back up to the front. And how's our train stats looking? We got nine loads, 38 empties. Okay, should be in good shape. Look at, is it this one? Yeah. There we are. Yeah, two and a half horsepower per ton. We got plenty of power on here. Because most of the train is unloaded. So now that we have all the cars hooked up, we actually have a switch list here for pickups and setouts. It's all based off of the car tags. Uh, and you can see all the setouts are going to Borax, which is the industry. So it's just one industry. It's just about done pumping up. While that's pumping up, does I go back to idle if I relinquish? Not 100% sure. Let's go get our uh, yard power out of the way here. Well, I can just cross back over. Let's get it down here, clear the switch. It's at least in the clear then. All right, we could actually run a terrain. I do a lot of local and yard work. I don't know if I should send this out to AI, because I don't think I can Request a sighting for the AI, so I might have to run it out there myself. How far is that? Uh, let's see. They had mileposts and all these signals. Whoa! Apparently not.
Must be thinking of the old dispatcher. Well, let's do it. Let's run the train. We'll run the uh, the borax local. Let's see, rail driver, let's set this to throttle notch. Calm down, the OT. Why are you moving around? Let's get our flow right down and we're gonna do some brake tests and then we'll head out of here. You ready to go, Bob? Bob likes to just sit there and silently judge my train handling skills. So the end of train device shows us we got 74 pounds on the back of the train. Uh, which is not what we should have. But we need to do a set and release and get these synced up, I think. Yeah, I guess it's... it's yeah, it's, they're all starting to release. We're getting there. So this shows the simulation of uh, the entire train. Uh, the circles are the two locos. And then there's a little like box for each car. The top line is coupler force. And the bottom line is uh, brakes. Yeah, so now we're all fully released. That's good. So let's go ahead and put an initial set on. something quite possibly never open that up all the way Let's go for a 20 pound set and then we're going to release. There we go. So we've got that propagating through the train. I wonder if did I forget to set an angle cock correctly? About halfway back. That's kind of what it looks like. I might still have a partially open one out there. So I'm going to have the conductor check that. There we go. So now all the angle cocks and arrows are set. Got something going on there in the train, but sometimes it takes a set and release. To get all the brake here working correctly. So let's go ahead and do a release, but let's get the handbrake set. Back up to notch three to get that air pump going. So Run 8 does a really good job of simulating all the systems. Each car is individually modeled. You can get like a, a sticking piston on the brake cylinder. You can have air hoses, brake, you can have... Um, Stuff dangling off the car. I don't think it's visually modeled, but you can then pick a switch with that and it'll rip the hose off and 
drop your train in an emergency. There's just random things that can go wrong. All the traction motors and the locos are simulated. They can get too hot. Stuff like that. They can fail. I haven't had too many failures yet. I've had, I think, two fuel pumps and one traction motor since V3 came out. All right, good release. Let's go back for uh, another set. No, we're still building. Wait for that flow to get down. Nothing happens fast on a train, fortunately. are working. So we're 2,800 feet long, about a half a mile. There we are, we're down to like 40 on the flow rate, so let's do initial set. Looks like we're getting a smooth application throughout the train now. So we have this graphical bar up here because it doesn't visually represent the brake shoes on the cars moving. So this lets you look at what's happening versus walking down the train and, and looking at the brakes moving. Alright, that's looking good. Can go for the further reduction down. 20 pounds. Looking good. A little uh, sticky problem we had in the middle there seems to have cleared itself up. So I would say we should go ahead and pull forward. Take the parking brakes off. Bail off the loco brakes. See that coupler force building up here as we start stretching the train out. Rear end's on the move, whole train's moving. Still wrong button. What is it to save the save the position? Can't remember. Oh, it's right control P. That's intuitive. get on to the yard track. I don't want to confuse the uh, dispatcher. Might blow his little AI mind if I was in different tracks, I'm not sure.
ways to go. I'm going to go update my spreadsheet here. Uh, we are They have a drop down for that. Fix my spreadsheet real quick. clear of that track back there. Good deal. Uh, let's see. 3213. What's up, Scruff Dog? Or if he knows where I'm going. I don't think it's that sophisticated. Oh, he's routing me out to the Mojave sub, so that's that's a plus. All right, we got a medium approach. I'm not sure. Are you supposed to be on dim headlights when you're in the yard, and you only bring those up when you get out on the main line? Some amps to her. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do, but that works. <laughs> Soink. That's right, we got we got a horn. Yeah, the tr the trains look pretty good in run eight. The uh, the scenery itself is fairly simplistic, but the train models and stuff are pretty good. I like the deep simulation though. 
graphics are secondary. All right, I'm gonna pull out my little my little cheat sheet here. This is all like the different signal indications. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty crazy. I'm still learning. I'm a little rusty. Yeah, diverging approach medium. That's what I thought. Proceed on diverging route, not exceeding prescribed speed through turnout, prepare to pass next signal and not exceed 35 miles an hour. There we go. Yeah, spaceships are easier. <laughs> uh, we need to stay at 15 though till we're out of the yard. Use our little counter here when we get up there because we know our train length. So we're going to get out and we're going to cross over to that. What here is the middle track, it looks like. And I'm not sure if we have to cross again or if that's side track. Too much juice there, Skippy. So, I've got 2,300 tons. Darn near 2,400 tons. 200 axles. 2,837 feet. Running the uh, El Cal 0611. Four axle local. Crossing over there. It's like our rain died off. They did a good job on the wiper sounds. I'll give them that. All right, let's start the countdown. Then we'll know we're out of the yard territory. That's a side track, that's what I thought. And we're heading out here to the boron siding. So once we get out on the main, I'll tell dispatch to put us in the boron siding. And we'll see if old Otto puts us there. Been working pretty good, the new AI dispatcher. As long as you kind of learn its limitations and work around those. All right, we got red over green. Diverging clear. Okay. I'm a complete noob when it comes to like mainline running, so. We're doing this seat in my pants. We'll figure it out. No, not five. Four. This rail driver is really starting to tick me off. The throttle handle is just a mess. Straight to eight. What's up, Lindo? I don't even know what the speed out speed limit out here is. Uh is this button. Nope. 
One of these tells me. Oh yeah, we're in the 50 mile an hour zone now. That little beep beep means we're out of the yard territory. Oops. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> that was a diverging clear, wasn't it? Oh, there it is. Shift in. Yeah, diverging clear, so we're, we're good. All right, headlights on. I'm doing all right, doing all right. Uh, no, Scruff Dog, there's, it's completely up to you. I could go 100 miles an hour down this track and it wouldn't matter. It's, it's not really a game per se, it's more of just a simulator, sandbox simulator. It's my railroad, I can do what I want. Uh-oh, there's the transition. It actually cuts out the traction motor windings from like parallel to serial. I forget what it does exactly, but on this particular locomotive, when you're going slower, the it uses a winding pattern for more torque. Once you get above like, I don't know, 20, 22 mile, 20 or 22 miles an hour, it, it cuts out the traction motors and switches them over to a different winding pattern for uh, more speed. All right, we got a green light. Green means go. So that's what that was. We heard some relays clicking. The amps dropped out for a second. I don't really know this route, so we're just going to figure it out as we go. Noob alert. Well, we got some rain starting up again. That's right, Equalizer. Punch it, Chewy! <laughs> Woo! We're we'll have to throttle down a bit. We can only go 50. Oh, is it 40 here? No! Oh, you're right. <laughs> Oops. We're going 40-ish. It said 50 earlier. I guess it changed and I missed the sign. Oh, this rail driver is... Gonna drive me crazy. The throttle handle's just getting to where it just doesn't want to work at all. Yeah, we're going 40 ish. I had, I had, uh, this screen up earlier and it said 50, so I, I missed the sign. That's what happens when you don't know the route. Yeah, it was the slack. It was the slack officer that pushed us. Somewhere there was a little yellow sign like that, and I missed it. 70 mile an hour? Does that apply to us? Probably not. Let's uh, set our count down, though. <laughs> we're, not, we're not that special kind of freight. Yeah. We're, we're not that special. Dang, we must have a grade here. We're losing speed. Mix is 55. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Can you imagine us going 70, though, with these couple Jeep 40s? 
<laughs> Woo! Oh, we get to whistle. Oh yeah, sure. I've I've tested the limits, mainly to see what would happen. Need to open her back up. Got slowed down. train <laughs> a train line alarm I'm not even sure what that is I'm, I'm pretty much a noob like I love trains I used to do some model railroading but I'm, I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to actual railroad stuff I usually don't actually even run out of the main line I like doing uh, locals and yard work uh, this local we got to run out to the boron siding speaking of which I need to tone up the dispatcher Say. Oh crap. It's all falling apart. <laughs> I I hit escape to close something else and it closed the dispatch. Uh do, 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 do. No, not next sighting. I'm not actually sure what I need to do here. I think I could cancel. We could just... I could I could do a couple different things. I could wait and request next sighting, or I could cancel my routing and tell them we're going to Boron. Well, since we're already going, we'll just wait. What I should have done... Hush. What I should have done is when I initially toned him, I should have had that boron siding selected, and I didn't. You can double right click and it'll highlight green, and he'll route you to there. Uh, so we'll just have to wait. Or I could, I could just cancel. Let's, let's actually let's just cancel. We'll tell him we're going to boron. Oh, I'm ready to go. Let's do it. He's going to get tired of hearing from me. Uh-oh. That looks like a red. signals i'm not sure what that one we just passed was approach right i don't remember what the speeds are for approach 35 maybe 30 all right thanks you think we've got equalizer here who actually knows what he's doing or she Yeah, I see that red up there. So I figured that was approach, but I wasn't 100% sure. Yeah, I don't remember when I got run 8 version 2, uh, but I just kind of dabble in it. 
I don't do it often enough to remember all the stuff. Oh, we got some popo. Like they're after somebody. We got blinky lights. Oh, that signal's like right there. I wasn't paying enough attention. We're fairly light, though. Yeah, Lindo, you got to kind of know the route, and I don't know the route at all, so we're learning. There, I did the traction motor cutout thing again. Yeah, we're coming up on Hinkley, it looks like. Yeah, equalizer says East Hinkley siding. As you can see, my train handling is crap. <laughs> hey, but practice makes perfect, right? I don't understand why we're stopping here. There's like nobody ahead of us. Cutting her a little close! Look out! <laughs> Can't actually see the signal. There we go. We're good. Yeah, an acquired skill for sure. So why are we stopped here? That's that's what I'm confused about. Like, it's wide open. So why are we stopped here, Mr. Dispatch? Yeah, a little bit of wheel slip. <clears throat> we'll just ignore that. Just pretend like it didn't happen. Yeah, you're right, Scruff Dog. It is It is pretty cool. And this is a really light train. Uh, let me bring up... So we're only 2,400 tons. We've got gobs of power. Uh, you get one of these big, big trains, and it's it's pretty crazy. And if, you're, if you don't know what you're doing, you'll break it to train apart. I've, I've broken couplers before. But I mostly do the small local jobs. That's kind of what I like. So this is kind of a rare treat to actually get out on the main. Don't do it a lot. Yeah, equalizer. A lot of, I got a lot of guys like that. And it takes a lot of skill. It takes a lot more skill than just the local switching stuff that I do. It's fun to take a big train sometimes up over to Hatchapi. Or however you say that. I'm probably saying that wrong because I'm from Missouri. So now what? Why do you have me stopped here, dispatch? It doesn't make any sense. Did I request? Oh, I thought I requested that. Did I hit escape too fast or something? 
I must have screwed up the uh, signal there somehow. Or, I mean, the page. That's why you stopped us, because I didn't ask for it. I'm dumb. We're good. Oh, easy there, handle. Bang this train into motion. <laughs> Alright, the rear's moving. Sorry, rip ears. There we go. There's a nice, a nice drive by. Old Jeeps are sounding pretty good. Back to the cab. Dang it. This handle is just being stupid. Got green. I can cheat and look at the dispatch board. All right, we got uh, we get past Hinkley, then we got Jim Gray, and then we'll have Boron. I don't actually know where we're going once we get to Boron Siding. We'll get into Boron Siding, and uh, we'll see what we need to do from there. Put the beans to her. You think Bob? You're just here for the here for the entertainment. Bob's pretty stoic. He's a good guy to have in a crisis. And with me driving the train, we're probably gonna have a crisis. Yeah, it could be Lindo. It's it's been a long time since I was up at Borax, but we'll uh, we'll look at the charts. In fact, I could actually bring those up. Uh, let's go over to over to the depot. They've got excellent maps. Do, 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 do. Which page are you on? Even if your mouse is on the other screen, it still like activates the menu because reasons. There we are. So if we pull the map over here, so we're going to we're gonna become past Jim Gray, and we're gonna head into Boron Siding, and then um, we actually need to be facing the other way like interesting we got some sightings to work with here so yeah we'll see how it goes when we get there come up with a game plan
We're on a wide open and we're still not even past 45. Yeah, we got a little short train, so it's no problem. We're only uh, 2391. We got some sightings to play with there. Turn that back on. There we go. Now we're getting some speed. I wish it would only show you your detector. Like, it shows every detector on the railroad. <laughs> Not exactly useful. You know what's useful? Rattling down when you're about to overspeed. So, we got a signal coming up. I might just leave that up while we learn the rails here. We got a green. Should put a little more power going into that curve. As you learn the route, you can anticipate those kind of things. There we go. Well on our way down to Boron. So next signal is Jim Gray. Excellent. A little bit of a dipsy duel on the track there. Seven six two. Let me look and see if we got some better uh, screens. Like you can just replace this image. I'm pretty sure. It would have more info on it. Well, if we had a heavy train, we'd be struggling. Stick your head out the window. Feel the wind through your hair. It's loud out here. Keep the speed up and charge it. Yeah, that's where knowing the route comes in. So if you don't know, that little tone that sounds every once in a while is the alerter. So if you haven't touched the controls in a while, 
I forget what the timing is. Uh, it it sounds that alarm, and you got to hit the. I'm not sure if it's actually modeled in this cab. I've got it on my rail driver. You got to hit a button to let the train know that you're not dead or asleep or something. If you don't acknowledge that alert, after a while it puts the train in emergency. It's going to drop again at East Jim Gray. Yeah, I wonder if that that's probably on. Yeah. Siding is 40 mile an hour. The Jim Gray 769. No, 772. I was reading the thing wrong. So we got like eight miles to go. Guys would put toolboxes and stuff on it. Sounds about right. And we got another grade crossing coming up. Green light past that. Run eight, we're giving it its name. <laughs> Just means it takes longer to figure out a way around it. Yep. That was actually our detector. Should trip my counter and know when I was past the detector. Alright, we're getting another green so far. Shouldn't be anybody else out here. Yeah, nobody's coming for a little ways. Oh, they got Mohawk over to version 3. Nice. Yeah, I, I run their uh, industry configs. Yeah, the depot is an awesome place. Uh, good forums, good people. If I had more time, I would get into the depot plus, but I just kind of dabble in this and I, I bounce around between different games. I don't have the time to dedicate to it. So I just do my own little railroad thing on single player. Then it can set for three weeks and it doesn't matter. I've just been uh, building locals I've got a handful of locals I build out of uh, Barstow. Some of them run out to Bakersfield. Actually, all of them except this one run out to Bakersfield. Operate out of there. Seven sixty-six. All right, six miles to go. This is by far the, the longest local I've used. Most of them are pretty close to Bakersfield. 
and I'll let the AI drive them from Barstow to Bakersfield. Yeah, I've just got the, the base routes. I haven't bought any extra routes. I bought a bunch of car packs. What's up, Hemi? Welcome. No, I think Needles is a different sub, right? I forget. Oh, no, wait, no, Needles is part of the base. No, I haven't, I haven't run that one, I don't think, unless it was years ago. Put this back on speed. Yeah, I'm glad you came on over, Hemi. You're up to uh, episode four on the Space Engineers. Cool. That series is probably going to get put on hold. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, but it's it's back to not loading again. It doesn't load. Uh, industrial overall mod crashes. So I'm hoping there'll be an update. Uh, but I've got I've got Monday's episode and Wednesday's ep Wednesday's episode in the can. So we'll just have to see what happens. I don't know if there'll be a Friday episode. <laughs> but that'll be up to 21 or 22. So you've got a ways to go. You're good for a while. All right, so that's approach, right? Green over red. Oh, that's clear. Okay. Never mind. I gotta learn these signals. There's there's so many of them. I need to at least get the basics down. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. So as long as it has green on top, it's clear. I need to get the, the basics down. We're good. Do I have... I used to have a full screen webcam button, but I don't see that anymore. To look into that. I was going to show the the signal page on the full screen. Never did memorize the more complicated ones. Yeah, I need to. Get I need to get the basics. If, if you're not diverging, you just need to look at the top one for some of them. Two miles to the next signal. Lost a little bit of speed there. Why is your name purple and you have a crown next to it? Uh, what does the crown mean? Let me look. Is that prime? Premium. Did you buy something with Twitch? It says badge premium. Yeah, you're, the color you see him as won't necessarily be what he sees himself as. He's orange on my screen. And he's gray on another screen. <laughs> I 
Yeah, that should be 772 up there, I think. Jim Gray. And Fegan's got the little, I think his is turbo. He's got a little special icon too. Yeah, turbo. The speed's gonna drop. I don't see that on the map unless the map's just not updated. Because we're not going into the siding, right? Oh, the grade's gonna drop. I got you. Got you. We're definitely climbing now. Wide open and barely doing 38. We get a nice drive by if I'm working hard upgrade. We've got a 0.6 grade, 0.6% grade. All oh, these are SDs. I thought I was in the Jeeps. My bad. It's got too many axles to be a Jeep. Not a Jeep 40. All right, we better get back in the cab. It's about to drop, drop off the edge of the world here. My stupid handle's not letting me notch down very slow. Yeah, do they have the same prime mover equalizer? I don't know how much I need to notch down here as the rest of the train gets over the hump. I probably came off the power way too much. Yeah, I get that Hemi. I used to, I used to travel for work all the time, which was fun. But when we decided to have kids, I quit doing that. Now I'm a little baby boy as a freshman in high school. <laughs> I came off the power way too much. All right, let's scroll this page up so I can see a little better. Chat back over here. Come here, chat. There you are. No, nope. wrong button. All right, then we got another ten miles to bore on, so we're we're getting close. Really equalizer? Dang, that's pretty bad. At least they're consistent. So if I go to this view, then I can 
flip on. There you go. Everything's all right. Whee! The more modern locos have LCD screens, and you can actually see like traction motor temps and stuff like that. say it kind of feels like reclining I thought about getting like the a line or something I'm just I'm tired of looking at brown that <laughs> was out at the um, uh, was it the Tehachapi loop it was all it was all green out there that was cool you find some locals where it's actually green Yeah, I've seen videos and streams of A-Line. But I don't know. I, I don't really play this a lot. V3 came out, and I hadn't touched Run 8 in long time maybe a year or more so I can't really justify spending too much money on it <laughs> I did buy all the well car packs all three of those I think they were 10 bucks a piece so spend another 30 bucks on it because I was tired of looking at these big unit trains of run eight stretched box cars and the well cars do look really good no regrets Hey, we got a gas station up here. We have some actual scenery. Yeah, Lindo. I, I love Run 8, but I, as people, regulars of the channel, know, I bounce around between all kinds of different games. Uh, yesterday, I streamed some Star Citizen, so we were flying around in spaceships and shooting people on planets and things. <laughs> Hush. 776. Boron is 783, so we're getting closer. Looks like we got a grade crossing up here. We got some uh, power line towers, a few buildings. There's a gas station over there, some warehouse type stuff. A little bit of something here. I don't know what it is. This is probably U.S. Highway 395 on the map. 777.6. Possibly. Getting our speed back up. We're on f flat level ground for a little ways. Ooh, we got two gas stations. It's a big town. Looks like we got a Chevron on the left and wherever that one with the big giant ball is. Yeah, equalizer. I just forgot to look at the sign. I was looking over at the map. Let's see where I was. So there's the highway coming up, so it looks like it's U.S. Highway 395. The motel over there. Better stop back there, Peterbilt. It's not going to end well for you.
I really like the maps. Uh, I can't remember who makes them for the depot, but uh, the depotserver.com is a great resource. I think exclamation depot in chat will give you a link to it. Is it Sean? Does some really good work on the maps. They're a super handy resource. Okay, I take that back. Apparently that command doesn't work. <laughs> I thought I had that set up. Apparently not. I can fix that. Yeah, it takes a lot of time, for sure. There we go. Now we got a command. We got yellow over yellow. That's going to be some kind of approach, something or other. Yeller over a yeller, approach medium. Proceed past next signal. Proceed past next signal, not exceeding 40 mile an hour. Prepare to advance on diverging route at the next signal. Right. What that said. We're getting close to Boron. 783.1 would be Boron. I think we're going to have a little bit of a grade here to help me slow down, which would be nice. It had those little pop-up messages. Reduction 30 and 2.8 miles. That's cool. That's a super handy info to have up when you're learning the route. Yeah, it looks like that's almost at the top of a hill. So maybe going 40 when we pass that. That's not going to be a problem. How big is this map? I don't really know. It's it's hundreds of miles, depending on where you go. I couldn't really tell you. It's uh, real world scale. Yeah, one to one scale. And if you if you bought all the routes, you could go from like the middle of Arizona to LA. And it, it would take like, I don't know, 12 hours. I mean, it takes a long time to go across the route. But I only have the base game, which is, oh, Barstow and Mojave sub and the Needles sub. But I don't know, as far as mileage, I don't know what that is. Because it goes in different directions too. Exceeding 40 a little bit. I'm trying to get my throttle handle to sort itself out. Sorry, train. I apologize. <laughs> I'm moving this like an inch and it's not changed in throttle notches. It's really annoying.
All right, now we got to diverge, so that's the Boron sighting. Yeah, diverging approach, reduced to 30, right? Cool. Actually, a little bit downgrade. So I'm going to get the dinos set up in case we need them. So the dynamic brakes, uh, they use the traction motors to generate electricity and then they pass it off as heat and that helps slow down. It's kind of like electric cars use their motors for regenerative braking. Only instead of recharging batteries, it just dissipates that energy as heat. We get pretty deep into the dynamics here. We're not quite slowing down enough. Close. All right, he put us on the siding just like we asked. And Equalizer or somebody in chat might know, the sound you hear from the dynamic brakes, is that the fans? Or what? what is that noise? I kind of assumed it was the cooling fans, but I don't know for sure. Or is that just the noise it makes? Oh, I forgot to hit my counter, darn it. But I think I want to pull in. I think I'll fit. Uh, oh, yeah, it's 8,400 feet. I'll definitely fit. And yeah, I mean, it takes a lot of work to keep the trains from running into each other. Alright, hit my counter. We'll know the rear of the trains in the clear. It's like we got a decent downgrade here.
You get the initial application of the air brakes. Wasn't quite enough because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Close. Close, but no cigar. Right, so that goes. Oh, no, no. So I should have stopped back here in the clear. I was I was two locos off. I'm a noob. What can I say? What are you gonna do? <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me go to fly view. See so yeah, how we fit nicely down there. I just I just need to back up and then we're good to go. Um, what's our, what's our move going to be here? Actually, let's go take a look at the industry. Uh, so we have to run out here. I think that's a holding track and everything from our perspective is facing point switches. Um, so we're probably going to need to start pulling it, pulling these, uh, pickups out. So actually that's fine. We're probably going to cut off our road power. Or, I don't know, are you supposed to use... I don't really know how this industry is set up. That's just the plant switcher. That's moving cars around in the plant, I would guess. Wow, that's a lot of pickups. So, we've got some room out here. Some room. Here, I don't know if all those, if all those won't fit, we could use that holding siding. That's probably the thing to do though. But I have to use the main. I guess I should have left my train back here in hindsight. Yeah, that would have been the smart move. I don't know. I'm, there's a, a way somebody has figured out how to work this the smart way. But I don't know what that is. But we need to pull all these out before we can set our cars in there. That much I know. So most of these are probably on our switch list if I bring that up. No, it's actually, that's not that many cars to pull out. Okay, so if we turn car tax back on, uh, let's do so. Who's set to be picked up? Covered hopper sixty-seven thirty-one, thirty-one fifty-seven. Oh boy, where are you guys? Ah, 3157. 6731, that was the two, right? Can I sort by car type? No, but I can export this to a spreadsheet. Then I can sort, I think. So if we go look over here in... Uh, where's it put that? Is it in routes, regions? Yeah, here it is. Yeah, there's not that many cars getting picked up. A lot of setouts, though. So we're pretty small train heading back.
I gotta figure out how to sort this now. Uh, sort. Sort key columns C. Oops. Data sort column C. There we go. So there's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So we're picking up these three. And then we've got four acid tank cars. I'm guessing you're that, those guys. Uh, let's check the numbers. 2462. 57 of those. Yeah, so that's the four. All right, so we need... We're going to need the switcher out of the way. Or I could use the switcher to pull them out. Need that that cut and then this cut. Acid tank cars empty. Yep, yeah, that's the ones. Then we've got a string of four box cars, which are loaded. I have a bad feeling it's those guys. Uh, box car. Yep, 1141. Yeah. So we got some shuffling to do. I don't know if we even get this done today. But I could I could grab this power um, and use it. So uh, relinquish my train. You just double right click to undo that. Oh, maybe because I don't have a train. It won't let me relinquish it. Okay, now that I have a train again. There we go. All right, you chill there in the siding. We've got a train coming somewhere. Yeah, coming down the line. Down there somewhere. Be passing us up. There it is. Oh, he's empty. He's hauling ass, too. Anywho, uh, he's going to be flying by us. Where's he at? He's he's down there a ways. Uh, I got to get that clear, though. I can't get past this train. So what I ought to do is back this up to where I should have originally stopped. So in hindsight... The thing to do is to stop before this grade crossing. Leave this runner on track open. That's the, the right thing to do. All right, let's get back on the ground. <laughs> it sounds so sad. We're gonna have a train flying by us here in a second. Hear the turbine winding up a little bit because the brake pipe pressure is going back up. Comes the slack. It's 
it's not annoying at all. <laughs> I hear the other train. It's going to come screaming by. Sounds really good in my headphones. this train. He's hauling ass, too. There he goes. <laughs> Woo. That was fun. Nobody can hear me. There's nobody here anyway. Oh, look out, sir. Okay, he turned. Coming through. So a counter. All right, that's about that's about all of the uh, EOT turbine I can take for now. Let's bop down here to. We'll watch from back here. Come on, give me notch four. There it is. There's apparently a lot of birds around here. to judge distance sometimes. Pick up a little more speed. Not too much. I to turn my headlight back to dim. All right, let's get our initial set on. So let's do 10 pounds. I pushed the hand a little too far anyway. Should be past the grade right about now. There we go. All right, you guys sit there and chill.
so now we can pull stuff out and we can run around on the run around track. Let's head back over to Borax. Get the plant switcher fired up. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to use these for, but that's what I'm going to use them for. So you're the lead unit. All right, let's just do this. I'm going to do this the easy way. So I got a couple uh, 40 dash twos. Things should be good. built up. It won't take long just building air for the two locos. So if you're outside, that just drops you to the ground view. But if you're in engineer view, and it goes to orbit. Okay. Fair enough. So, first order of business is going to be to back down and grab that cut of hoppers. Let's go get those hooked up. I assume they're all, yeah, they're all disconnected. Those guys should be ready. Uh, you get these whoa, acid cars. Phase through all the trains. See, so the covered hoppers and the box cars are loaded. The acid tank cars are empty. All right. But we should be able to handle five loaded uh, covered hoppers with two locos worth of brakes. So we'll drag these out and then we'll pump air once we're hooked onto the tank cars. Well, the tank cars are empty. I may just have to grab that whole cut. One step at a time. <laughs> 
Let's get hooked onto here and we'll see what we need to do. These guys are, yeah, they're all blood out. At least the handbrakes. Slack's all good. bird's eye view. So we need this cut. We don't need that cut. Um, we have to do a little bit of shuffling. So we'll grab the acid tank cars. That'll be the first step. And we can pull those out. Stick the ones we need there. Push the rest back in. That should work. Let's do that. So let's get over here. Whoa! Get us back into them. Eventually need to be down here. I use those save positions quite a lot when I'm switching around, playing conductor and engineer. Stop with ten pounds, no problem. All right, should get us lined back up into the acid cars. Beautiful.
We got a little bit of gravity helping us now, I think. Yeah, a good solid couple. Could open that because there's no air in the train. Be quick. There we go. Oh, this is this one I need to throw back. Sometimes you just gotta blow the horn. It's the rules. Come on back to the boxcars. Check. I'm not sure if these boxcars are loaded. I know the ones I'm picking up are. I'm not sure about the longer string. We might need some air.
It's all super cloudy today. As far as I know, the weather is just random based off season. Be cool if you could get some real weather in there. A lot of these are loaded. We're probably going to need to get some air. Kind of hate to be moving this many cars with uh, with no air. I guess we could go slow. I hate to go to all the trouble. All right, let's go full independent. Please, the handbrakes. Go for the best. <laughs> Because these are the four acts they want. the handbrakes on those four. Hop on. There we go. Alright, can we move? I'm sure we can move it. It's just stopping it that's the important part. Now we're gonna pull all the way back out. We're gonna drop these four cars we actually need back past the switch. Then back this cut of box cars we don't need back over here on this siding. And then we'll have all of our pickups. We'll run those out to the siding. And we'll just have our set outs to do. I'm not sure how much of that I'm gonna get done. I do need a break here at some point. Uh, go do some stuff, get some food. But it's going pretty well so far. I think Otto is keeping things under control. Setting up meets and doing unprototypical stuff, but hey, the trains are moving. <laughs> That's all that matters. To keep it around 10 miles an hour. Don't want to get too crazy. We're not dealing with any crazy grades out here, so. We should be able to stop it, no problem. Alright. 
I'll stop back up here. Watch the train roll by. Piece of cake. Apparently, I don't have whatever car pack these are part of. We're a uh, Southern Pacific. There's one car, two cars. Three cars. And number four. Bricks out of whole dose. Back in we go. that noise it sound good Rake's dragon maybe I'm not sure thought all these would have been blood out
It's probably fine. Perfectly normal noises. Like deja vu all over again. Alrighty, pull back out, grab those four boxcars, and then that's all of our pickups. There's still a lot of cars there. I don't I don't know where all the uh, cars are gonna go that we brought in. This will just try to put them with like the same type. Got on the brakes way late. on and we'll actually get some air in the train to take him out to the uh, main line not the main line the, the uh, passing siding that was a good hard couple Breakable in these box cars. All right, full independent. You saw the handbrakes. I think all these, yeah, all those air hoses are connected. So. Close you off, we'll throw a flag on there. Then I think just need to get air flowing in. Some air pumping. Seventy pounds back there. Excellent. Nice short train. Doesn't take too long. All right, let's hop in the cab for a change. Turn on some lights so we can see what's going on. I wonder, does it save camera position like per train or something? I had that a little lower.
Bob, you switched trains with me. Bob's such a good helper. He's just all right. Flows coming down pretty good. Close that on the back, right? Yeah, it's still coming down. Just takes a little while. Let's go ahead and get a, a set on though. Let's do a, a 10 pound. deeper. We have to do a release before anything starts responding. be built back up pretty well. Did I screw something up? It doesn't act like we're getting any uh, train application. I probably screwed something up. That's usually the case. I did auto on these, so these should all be good. Huh. What's the deal? I closed this one, right? Yeah, that one's closed. Oh, I messed up something. We don't have a... Oh, I didn't... I didn't cut in this string here, did I? That's what's going on. Alright, back over to this. I can watch the flow. Told you I messed something up. guys. Yeah, those are open. I thought the rest of the train was it's all good. Okay, flow's coming down. Now yeah, can we get a set? No. Okay. What did I do wrong? Is it because I have the independent on? Yeah, let's put the uh, let's put the parking brake on.
Oh, stop it, rail driver. Launch three is fine. Yes, these all should be good. Arrows are connected. I like that you can just look at the uh, ankle cock to see if it's open, closed, or partial. You guys are all good now. Initial application. There we go. I guess having the independent on was messing it up. I'm not sure why. I don't know what difference that makes. Still learning. Uh, looks like maybe we're not getting anything on these boxcars, though. Got brake pipe pressure. You're not responding though. Alright, let's do a deeper set. Let's go all the way for a 20 pound set. Seems on the brake pipe. Brake cylinders aren't doing anything. Okay. That's cool, I could hear it hear it release. Yeah, brake pipes coming back up. Close back down. Let's do another initial set. And you are not working at all. Sweet! Why would that be? Bug or a feature? <laughs> Hey, Lindo. Uh, we're not, the brake cylinders aren't responding on these four back box cars. They're not responding to the change in the, for whatever reason. I've done several applications and releases. Brake cylinders are just setting it uh, zero. So I don't know, do I need to like bleed them and start over? Maybe? I don't know. I'm not too knowledgeable on the air brakes other than just the basics. The rest of the train seems to be responding okay. Just not these uh, rear four We have brake pipe pressure, but nothing else. All right, well, I'm gonna bleed them. I don't know what else to try, so uh, let's close that.
just let everything bleed out. We'll start over on these four. Uh, I'm not sure what numbers you mean, Lindo. If you're talking uh, brake pipe, the brake pipe was following just fine. Everything was good except the brake cylinder didn't ever fill up. Uh, brake pipe, auxiliary, emergency reservoir. It was all good. The brake cylinders was, weren't responding. Alright, so they're bleeding out. Let's just double check. You were definitely closed. You guys are all good. Is that a notch three for now? Keep it on in the flow. Yeah, all the numbers look good for the auxiliary reservoir. I thought maybe I missed something. But I'll double check that. Like these were all, all three were almost in line, unless I just misread something. We've got a set on the train now. Let's go ahead and release that. reservoir is still filling up on these guys. I guess we'll go back to notch three. Make sure we're pumping the most air we can. I love the detail though. I just, I need to learn more about this stuff. I haven't seen that particular failure before. I've had the occasional sticky brake cylinder, which is cool. Usually a, a set and a release will break that loose. I was watching a stream and they were trying out the new multiplayer helpers. So we had one player, you know, in the lead locos and the player on the back with helpers. And they were going through tunnels and uh, the dude's engine would overheat when they were in a tunnel because it wasn't a tunnel motor. <laughs> I was like, wow. Epic. So real it can become irritating. <laughs> Slowly filling up. Not sure why it's being so slow. It's getting there. That one's up to 63. Yeah, they're all up to like 63 now. I'll make sure the auxiliary reservoir is all the way full. Maybe that was it. Maybe it was just too low and I didn't notice the number. Yeah, there's all kinds of crazy detail now. Even more. I mean, V2 was already good, but V3 just added on top of that. If you don't supply air to your EOT device, it'll its battery will eventually die. That's the kind of stuff I like. Now, if I could have Train Sim World graphics and that, I'd be all for it. But if I have to have graphics or simulation features, I'll take simulation features any day of the week. Oh, 
Like we can even do retainer valves now. I was reading about those. Not too much need for those. I don't think they're used that much in modern times, but it's cool that it's simulated. All right, we're at 78 pounds, if you can, in case you can't read that on Twitch. We got 90 on the brake pipe. We're coming up to 80 on the auxiliary reservoir. So that was probably it. It was probably just too low. I thought it was high, but maybe it was just too low. The rest of the train, they're, they're all filled up. So that was probably it. I wasn't patient enough. What's that noise? Just a wine off the uh, locos. Don't have anything broken. All right, we're almost there. We're at eighty-nine pounds. <laughs> let everything get all filled up There'd be no excuses not to work are the engines cold no they, we've been working them for a while uh, I don't think there's any gauges on these it's probably simulated because I know on the modern locos with digital readouts you can actually see like the engine coolant temperature and all kinds of stuff All right, now we got everything full. I bet that was it. I bet the aux auxiliary reservoir just wasn't full enough. So let's do a 10 pound set. There we go. There, yeah, it's working like a champ now. That was it. I just wasn't patient enough. Didn't understand enough about what was going on. So we learned something. Knowledge. About half of you got bored and left, but that's okay. <laughs> this this type of gameplay is definitely not for everybody. Ah, we're looking good. Make sure we get a clean release. Should have bailed off those locos. Top back in the cab. No, you're good, Hemi. I, I see you in the chat list. Lurking, lurking is fine. I wasn't talking about being active in chat. I was just looking at the, uh, the number of people. It was about half what it was 20 minutes ago. Ran to the store earlier. Yeah, it's all good, man. I get a lot of lurkers in here. No problem. All right, we are good. We're ready to head out. So a similar cab, but slightly different than our SDs that we ran over here with. I think the, uh, gate, the speedometer there might be a little different, but the, the basic stand, I think, is all pretty much the same. Uh, I think we're limited to 15 here, right? Yeah. So we can't go super fast, but... I'm going to take this cut out and then I'll probably break and 
hell of a day. I might be back later tonight, I'm not sure, but I need to get some stuff done and get some food. But we'll get these out to the siding. And we'll be halfway done with the, uh, the Boron Local. We're speeding. Get that back up. Should be heading up a grade. How are we speeding that much? I was running a, a fairly heavy train. Um, it was it is it nine oh six? Uh, no, it was the 913J. LS913, LS LS913J. Over to uh, Paramount and Tricor. I was running that one. It was raining. I didn't have a ton of horsepower to spare. And uh, when it started raining, I started getting wheel slip problems. I couldn't go over like notch four without spinning out. <laughs> At one point, I even had to use sand. I was down to like two miles an hour. It was sand, I could get up into notch five, sometimes notch six. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Rain makes a difference. Had, uh, I don't remember if it was 50. It's quite a few loaded tankers. A couple Jeeps on the front. No, I had three. That's right, because the middle one lost a traction motor. Still worked, but traction num traction motor number four died. Oh, and if you were in that stream, I did figure out how to fix that. So later, um, I de I threw that engine dead on the back of a train, sent it over to Barstow. Had a train that was going to Barstow. So I just tacked it on the back and had it deadhead over to Barstow, and then I... If you take it to the locomotive shop, you park it there, and then you do refuel, uh, it does like oil, water, and maintenance. So the refuel button should really be called maintenance, I think, because it, it depend, it's location specific. If you're at a fuel stand, it'll do like oil, water, fuel. If you're in the locomotive shop, it also, it'll do uh, oil, water, and maintenance. And then it took like I don't know if it's 30 seconds or a minute or something, and then it fixed the traction motor. Is there a slider on the rain chance? Uh, not, not really. Not that I've noticed. You can change the... Oops, come back here. You can change the mode. You can set it to sunny, cloudy, precipitation, or stormy. So there's like two different levels of how hard it's raining. But when it's on auto, I'm not sure if it it is season dependent, but beyond that, I don't really know how it comes up with the weather. I really should be paying more attention to get some more throttle in here. Yeah, the new weather is pretty nice. What kind of blew me away is that in the wintertime it can snow. The snow actually accumulates. Like it will cover up the ground and, you know, the deeper it gets, it'll start covering up the tracks. Pretty crazy. Hey, somebody's camping out there. Do a little fishing maybe. Found him a water hole. some downhill.
Just have the loads coming down off that hill. Alright, there's the corner. We're under the siding. See, I didn't change this on my spreadsheet. Uh, updating my spreadsheet here and we're slowing down sorry train How's Otto doing? Everybody good? Everybody's going over to Hatchapi. Is that how you say that? I need to look up the pronunciation of that. I've always called it to Hatchapi, but that may not be right. Ooh, we got somebody coming into Barstow, finally. Now some more cars. Excellent. I get some screenshots. through the corner there. Oh shoot, I need to throw that switch. Run! Forgot to play conductor there for a minute. And we'll put you guys on this siding. having too much fun playing with the train. didn't sound too healthy. <laughs> like, wah, wah, wah. That one too. Anybody ever grease these bearings?
Grade's a killer. All right, uh, we're on a hill, so we're definitely going to set some handbrakes. Those four, and let's get some of these covered hoppers that are loaded. Hey, catch you later, Hemi. Thanks for hanging out. I'm probably going to wrap it up and go get some food. That, that ought to hold, right? There was something, I was watching Chris T. He's a real railroader that plays this. Uh, NS Horsehead SD70, I think it's his YouTube channel. And he was doing some kind of like slip test to see if he had enough handbrakes. I need to look back, in, back into that because I'm not 100% sure what he was doing. I think he was slowly releasing the independent, seeing if the train moved. I remember right. Yeah, it's going to bottle the air. You're probably not supposed to do that, but we're going to be pulling these back out. Once I do the setups. So the right thing to do would be to blow the air, but... that old caboose there is for just as a shoving platform if you need it Yeah, Lindo, I wasn't doing that right at all. And I realized that. I left the I left the air on, I left the initial application set on the brakes. So I was doing that horribly wrong. It's a traction motor whine that I'm hearing. This sounds really cool.
<laughs> there we are way down there we even hear the horn oh yeah a little bit So we'll take these engines back over to the uh, plant, tie them down. And then I'm gonna get some food. Oh, the wifey took, took the kids over to her mom's house today. They're doing some stuff. Watching some, uh, oh, what's that girly show that's coming on? Forget now. Something that was out on Disney Plus, I think, or something. So I think I might have to go get me some fried chicken. While wifey's away, I can I can eat really bad. Stand a little close there to the tracks. All right, um, I'm gonna throw you back just just to be consistent. We're gonna hop back in the cab. Pretty cool, huh? bit loud but pretty cool I couldn't figure out how to close the stuff for the longest time <laughs> I know we're speeding deal with it is it still yeah it's still 15 out here screw that <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that What I ought to do, though, is make sure the switches are lined up. Whee! Uh, I guess we'll tuck these back where they were. We'll put them back where we found them. Over here on this track. Zooming all over the place. All right, somewhere down there is our train. There it is. I don't know how fast you can go in notch eight. Downhill. <laughs> Watch me pick a switch and derail. Ooh, we're already at 60. Must be, is it geared for 65? I'm not sure what these are geared for. Maybe 75? Oh, but it hot.
Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Brakes uh, work a little better than I expected. I just threw on full independent and crossed my fingers. It actually took a surprising amount of effort to derail when I first was testing out the derail feature in V3. Yeah, it took quite a bit of effort to get anything to derail. Pretty cool though. I made a little short video on that on my YouTubes if you want to go check it out. Alrighty, let's get you tied down. Might as well shut these guys off. I think we're done with them for a while. Wait, I wonder if we... We might be spotting stuff there, though. So I should probably just leave them run. Oh, you saw it, Lindo? Cool. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just leave that running. We might need those. All right, I'm going to place myself back over by my train, and I'm going to call it quits for now. Appreciate you all hanging out for some train fun. So we got all of our pickups. Actually, if I go grab this train, we can do the switch list. Got no more pickups. We got a lot of set outs. So we got a lot of work cut out for us next time we work the Sporax local. Or on local, whatever it's called. So we can pull that train in, run around it, leave those in the siding as we push on through, and yeah. We'll have a plan. We'll have a plan. <laughs> Who's, who's rolling through? Any Star Trek fans in the house? Where's that train at? Did I go the wrong direction? Woo! We're going to have a train roll by for the outro. we got to find a train, though. There he is! Oh, that's the rear end. To find the front end. Here he comes. See y'all. Have a good one. <laughs>